Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the Echo plugin in Logic. Echo can be a really useful tool for filling in space, so if you have some sparse hits here and there, it can fill in some of that space really easily, or it can just be used to thicken up sounds in general. I'm just going to demonstrate this on a kind of a stabby synth that I've got in a track I'm working on at the moment, so this is what it sounds like without the Echo. So kind of standard, but we've got a little bit of reverb on there as well. And echo works really, really nicely with reverb, especially depending on which way round you have it. So whether the reverb is reverberating the echo or if the echo is echoing the reverb, you can get some quite interesting results. So I'm just going to run through the parameters on the echo to explain what they do and then show you them in use. So first of all, we have the note and this is how frequent the echo will actually happen. So at the moment, we've got it on an eighth note, so every eighth note, it will echo. So we can also change this to anything we like, really. So change to a quarter note. But you can get some really interesting effects if you're using triplet and dotted notes. You can get some really cool rhythms. So it's really worth playing around with. Next, we have the feedback. And the feedback is essentially how long the echo will last for. So if we have a really low feedback, there won't be much on it at all, whereas if we boost it, you can hear it's lasting for longer. You have to be very careful not to put the feedback up too high, because if you do, then the echo will last too long, and then the echo itself will get echoed, creating a very unpleasant feedback loop. So I tend to have it quite low, around 40 to 50, but obviously it's entirely up to you. If you want a little bit more, just give it a bit more oomph. And lastly, in this little section, we have the color. And this changes the harmonic content that each echo will actually have. So I'll just put it on zero and show you what it sounds like. So it sounds very natural. There's not really much extra to it. Whereas if we start bringing it up, we're starting to get more harmonics in there. I think it can sound very brittle this high, so I, t I tend to have it around 30 to 40. I get some quite good results like that. And then if you drop it all the way down, you'll hear that there is no echo. So there's so little harmonics in there, you're not actually getting an echo at all. But as we start again to bring it in, you can also have some quite cool results just by having it a little bit below. So we've kind of taken out some of the harmonics of the echo, creating an interesting effect. Now the last bit is the wet and dry signal. So the dry signal is your original sound. So whether it's audio or MIDI, so in this case we've got these MIDI stabs, that'll be the volume of these stabs. And at the moment we've got it on 100, so it's gonna be the normal volume, we haven't really changed anything. And then the wet signal is essentially the volume of the echo. So as it stands, we've got that on 80. So it's gonna be a little bit quieter than our initial hit. So it's gonna sound very natural because if there is an echo just in day-to-day -day life, the echo will be quieter than the original sound. And you can change this to whatever you want it to be. To make it even quieter or louder. So we could even do this the other way around. So we could have the wet really loud and then the dry quieter. So we'll have the initial hit will be softer, and then when the echo comes in, it'll be louder. Again, really worth playing around with. You can get some cool effects just by doing that, and it'll make it sound very open and spacey. So the echo is a really simple tool that you can use just to thicken everything up, and again, to fill in any space from quite sparse sounding instruments. It's also really, really good on vocals. Uh, I'm just going to do a whole video dedicated on vocal processing very soon, hopefully, um, where I'll demonstrate that. But this is really good on leads and certainly higher frequency sounds. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it on lower frequency sounds because it can start to make everything sound quite muddy, uh, which obviously we want to try and prevent. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.